Alright guys, so today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be covering Yu Zong, who is one of the strongest fighters in the meta right now and has been a staple top 10 fighter ever since he was released like 2-3 years ago. So I've tried looking for some guides by other YouTubers out there, but most of the ones I've seen aren't really recent. I think the one that was the most recent was like 4 months ago. So I decided I'm going to make one for you guys, um, hopefully you guys enjoy it. I'm going to be going over his basic kit as well as how you would combo with him before I'm going to be analyzing two of the mythical glory games that I played with him. Also, if you guys came here wanting to see the Prime skin, don't worry, I'm going to be using Cosmic Dragon in both of the games. So without further ado, let's just get started! Alright, real quickly before we start though, I want to show you guys me getting the Cosmic Dragon skin. Um, if you guys bought the M5 pass, um, I'm pretty sure you guys will be able to get enough XP to get level 75 and get the Prime skin for free. You just need to make sure you play every day, do the daily tasks, and collect everything, um, and then you should be good. So good luck getting the skin guys, um, hopefully you guys enjoy the gameplay, and back to the guide. Alright, so to start things out, I just want to show you guys how you can go to practice mode. So if you go to click on the hero and click on hero training, you can actually go into a 1v1 versus a computer game. Um, I highly recommend doing this if you haven't done it yet, for all the heroes that you ever want to try playing, because this is a really good way to improve. So starting out, you guys can see the prime skin. I already have the trails and everything. I turned off the AI so that it's going to be easier for us to just kind of practice on our own. So you want to start off by buying boots. Oh, actually, before we even start, here's the build for Yuzong that you want to go with. Um, there's two builds that I typically go for. It's either the top build for tankiness or the bottom build for offense. For both of the videos that I'll show you today, I'm going to be using the bottom build for offense. Uh, just a bit of a heads up because it's incredibly important to know which one's better. Um, and I'll show you guys the nuances of that as we play. Also, it's an important thing to note that you shouldn't really stick to just one or the other build. You should always try to adjust your items based on the enemy's composition. That's one of the things that Yuzong really has to do, so if you guys aren't comfortable doing that yet, I highly recommend learning that before you try learning Yuzong. Although, you still will probably dominate with him because he's just such a strong fighter right now. But anyways, you guys can kind of see me like showing off the skins right now. Um, these are the effects. So that was his basic attack. Um, I think I'm about to show you- yeah. So these are the basic attacks. As you guys can see, it's really flashy. I think it's a really decent design for a prime skin. The first skill, as you guys can see, is really flashy as well. So is the second skill. And his third skill, the ground stomp, is really, really flashy. And the dragon, I actually like. Um, although, I really feel like the M5 skin itself is really like well designed, not just the prime skin. So if you guys like own the regular skin as well, I think that it's a really good buy. So I think Moonten did really good this year with the prime skin design and everything. So <laughs> enough about cosmetics, I guess. Let's just go into the guide now. So as you guys can see, I'm about to show you his passive. So his passive is basically every time he hits an enemy, you add a stack of Shaw Residue, which is his passive. So what it does is it makes it so that you guys can kind of see here, um, if I just kind of zoom in, you guys can see that basically every time his passive activates upon reaching five stacks, um, each stack gets consumed every like 0.4 seconds to deal some damage plus 2.5% um, of their lost health per stack, right? So you're dishing out overall 12.5% of their lost health, but it's more than that because as they lose HP, it deals more and more damage over time, right? Because if like 2.5% of like you losing basically 90% of your health is going to do a lot more damage than if you had lost none of your health from the start. And of course, it also heals Yuzong by 6% of his lost HP. So it basically means that if Yuzong is basically at 1 HP, he will heal 6% of his health right away. If he's at 90% of his health, he's only going to heal like, what is that, like 2% of his health from that. So obviously, the less health you have, the more you regen you get. And you also get um, more movement speed every time you activate it for 3 seconds. It's 30%, by the way. So with that in mind, let's just go into his first skill. Alright, so Yuzong's first skill is a Cape Slash, as you guys will see here. So his Cape Slash has an inside and an outside circle. If you get hit by the inside of the circle, you're only going to take normal damage and only get marked one time. Whereas if you get hit by the outside of the circle, you're going to take 275% damage and get marked two times with his passive. So notice how on the inside of the circle, it only did 310 damage and marked them once. And now let me just reset the bot and let me show you guys again. So let me just reset it. And if I get hit on the outside, now they take 852 and they get two marks. So Yuzong's first skill is one of the first things you have to master to use him. It's his like basically main skill set. You want to try and hit the enemy with the outside of his skill as much as possible and only hit them on the inside if it's like some scenario that you have to overcome. Like let's say that you use your first skill and they're coming closer to you. In that case, you might as well just hit them with the first skill. 
on the inside and just get an extra stack of your passive. So always try to remember, always try to hit them on the outside. So Yuzong's second skill is basically a little bit of a Dragon Claw ability, as you guys just saw there. Um, it's really unique because it enhances his basic attack if he manages to hit an enemy. And it doesn't matter who you hit, it could be anything. So notice how I hit both of the jungle creeps there, and notice how I have two stacks. Um, every stack increases a stack of the passive. So notice here, I had the skill hit once, and then I use my enhanced basic attack, which adds three stacks of passive, and then I just had to hit him one more time to get it. So this basically means that you don't even need to hit the enemy. Um, because your basic attack by default has a stack and you hit four people like so, you can instantaneously activate his passive just like that. So his second skill is one of the ways you can activate his passive really quickly. And that's actually one of the cool things, like the most crucial things you have to memorize when you're playing it with a Yuzong. Um, you can also see that his basic attack gets enhanced because if you guys look carefully at Yuzong's right hand here, you guys will see that there's a dragon claw that appears. If you're fighting against a Yuzong who doesn't have his skin, it's typically going to be glowing, and you'll see him running a little bit faster. And yeah, you guys see the giant dragon call here. And I had five stacks of passive, which just instantaneously activates the passive on the bot Zylong there. So that's one of the other things you have to learn. His third skill is basically a skill that makes you get airborne after he hits you for a bit. Um, you can get two stacks of passive, one for hitting the enemy with your third skill, another for making them go airborne. And this is actually one of the uh, cool like um, combos that you can do so i'll show you in a bit basically you pair the first skill and the third skill together to um, basically dish out damage while making go airborne and third skill as you guys can see once he hits the ground he can dash to any direction that you want to um but yeah so the first skill third skill like this this is one of the combos you do then second skill basic attack and you instantaneously activate your passive and you dish out a ton of damage to the enemy so this is the combo you do first skill third skill and that will add in like four stacks. You could basic attack them or use your second skill to activate your passive afterwards. And the most important thing is you can actually add stacks of passive while the passive is activated. So you can like basic attack the enemy once you get to five stacks to get more than five stacks on an activation. Like you can get up to seven stacks or eight stacks depending on how fast your attack speed is. And you guys will see here as I keep attacking the enemy, um, they'll lose more and more health because of the passive basically is a reap skill. The less health they have, the more damage you do. So Yuzong's combo is kind of straightforward like that. It's typically just one, three, two. And his ultimate can go through walls and he gets extra health. It's like extra 1000 health, I think, um, while he's using that form. He's also gets like increased range on all of his skills. So you guys can see all of my skills have an increased range. And the second skill now has a special ability where you can attack enemies in a cone to get stacks. So that's really helpful for when you're fighting in a group because once you transform into a dragon, you can use the cone instead of a line to hit a bunch of enemies at once and use your enhanced second skill well, and your enhanced basic attack to just instantaneously mark everyone and just basically spam your passive, right? So you guys can see here, I'm just going to use Petrify as well. Um, that's how you use Petrify, by the way. Use your Petrify right after you land your third skill to keep them airborne. And now notice how that Zilong right there should be dead. Like, bots now are invincible and can't die, which is why he didn't die. But if that was an enemy character, they would have just died there on the spot. And you guys can see how my passive just instantaneously activated, and the other two also have pretty much max passive stacks, so you can just kill them pretty much instantly. So this is Yuzong's main role in a team fight. You want to use his skills to approach the backline and basically just completely disrupt them and make them run away basically allowing you to take the objective for free. And you guys will see that when I go into the real game. So that was the training. That's basically all you have to do for Yuzong. And now let's just go show you the gameplay to show you how you actually play him in a 1v1. All right, so for this first game, as you guys can see, I'll be fighting Xborg in the XP lane. And their enemy Helker is their jungler, while our Granger is our jungler. Their tank is Franco, ours is Minotaur. And this is just the build that you guys can see as I already showed you earlier. And yeah. So this is the team comp overall. Um, I feel like this is leaning towards us because we actually have a better overall team comp compared to theirs. So it's gonna be that. However, their Irithal does have a bit of an advantage as long as they get more farm. So this could go either way, but let's just see how it goes. So let me just fast forward this a bit. All right, so the game started. I'm actually not gonna buy anything just yet. Um, I'm fighting Export, so I'm probably gonna buy the Dreadnought armor first. 
Um, this item is really good. I think I mentioned it before in the Arlet video that you should really buy this item against people who do skill-based damage. Um, and x is one of those people who do a ton of skill-based damage. The reason why it's good is because it's basically like getting anti harass but you're getting like 70% uh, of the effects in exchange for only paying a third of the price. So it's a really good early game item, especially since they also made um, iron leg plates, I think, or steel leg plates, um, cost 100 more gold. So this is a strategy that you always want to do. Always go for survival over anything else. So what I'm trying to do right now is you might think I'm losing the lane, um, which I am, but I'm trying to basically focus on making Xborg lose some armor because his damage becomes severely reduced once he loses it. So notice how instead of upgrading the third skill here, I'm actually upgrading the second skill. Um, sometimes I upgrade the second skill instead of getting the third skill first because when the enemies are playing either lifesteal heroes or aggressive type heroes, um, they can actually sidestep your third skill. And I actually go for the second skill first to activate my passive. As you guys can see here, Xborg is going to try and come here, steal my crab. He fails, and in exchange, um, I'm just using my regen. My emblem emblems, by the way, in the current meta give you a ton of lifesteal. So don't be afraid to like exchange blows. I just got my Dreadnought armor, so now I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive in fighting. I unfortunately missed my second skill here, so I need to back off a bit until I get my cooldown back. Um, right now, I'm kind of just playing it safe until I hit level 3. As you guys can see, Xborg is already level 3 because he killed a minion. I hit a ton of targets. Um, I, right now, am afraid because I have no idea where Hellcurt might be. So I back off first until I get my map back. And now I'm like, okay, so Hellcurt's probably not here. I can probably fight. Unfortunately, Franco is here. He misses his hook, so I kind of laugh. And the fight continues. So I'm missing my skills too. As you guys can see here, we're just kind of dancing. Um, Remember, with Yu Zong, you never want to back off because um, you want to understand that his passive makes you heal a ton. So he's kind of like Terzla in the sense that like losing health doesn't actually matter too much. They actually have turtle advantage here, so I'm going to focus on trying to get this crab first. And then maybe ulting or moving towards the turtle here just to get some vision. I ult because this is Yu Zong's specialty. I'm praying that our jungler gets here in time, but he doesn't. So instead, I take matters into my own hands and take the turtle for us. Um, this is one of the best things that you can do because Yuzong is completely immune to crowd control while he's ulting. So that was a really good initiate. I unfortunately lose out on that first minion there, but it doesn't matter because I just got our entire team 60 gold and a ton of XP. So now I am I see that Hellcourt is right there. I'm backing off as much as I can. I use my Petrify to stunlock them and I'm perfectly fine right now. Our Minotaur comes in to help with the engage. I use my second skill, hit the Hellcourt, and now he should be dead because I'm going to dive him with my third skill and just kill him. So now I'm up a kill, and I got the turret, I'm um, not the turret, the turtle, and they're just losing overall because I am now extremely fed. So I'm just going to keep continue taking this crab. As you guys can see here, Xborg is also kind of low because he lost his armor. If you guys don't know, Xborg when he loses his armor, his first skill's damage is extremely lowered. And right now, the reason why I'm going for... Um, see Halbert here is because it's actually a, if you guys don't know, there's this YouTuber called Dats TV, who is a really good Yuzong player and is actually the person that I watch to like get better at Yuzong. So I highly recommend watching him if you want to just look up at more um, gameplay scenarios. Notice how like right now I'm playing more aggressively because I have more farm. But um, one of the things he says is he actually gets see Halbert first nowadays because what Sea Halberd allows you to do is if the enemies have more extra health than you, you actually do 8% more damage to them. So here, I actually didn't want to use my third skill to knock him airborne. I used it surely to get my first skill to get the hit on Xborg, which as you guys can see here, has lowered the Xborg's health drastically. And now that I have my third skill up, I'm going to pair it with Petrify um, once I get the opportunity. Notice how Xborg right now is really low. And I know that most Xborg players try to regen their armor again by going for this minion here. Um, right now, this Franco is completely out of position. He ults kind of uselessly, so I'm just going to tank everything and dash out with my third skill so that Xborg's ult doesn't hit me. And yeah, I'm just kind of playing this really well. Remember that your third skill and your ult are not necessarily just initiating skills. You can use them to escape as well. So always keep that in mind when fighting because Yuzong has a ton of like utility for pretty much every scenario. So right now, as you guys can see, I'm kind of ignoring Xborg, um, just going for the gold turret until I realized that at the very end, he was going to lose out. I unfortunately didn't make it in time for turtle. However, I am here for the turtle post fight. 
But even then, I was late. I missed my Petrify, unfortunately. My third skill didn't really hit. But I am kind of going for them, making them scatter a bit. And now everyone on the enemy team kind of has to recall. I realize I can't really get a kill, so I'm going to be a little bit more efficient and go for these minions instead to get an easy 120 gold. So remember that kills aren't necessarily everything. Um, remember that kills are only good because not only do you get farm, you also slow down the enemy's farm, right? But there's no point in always going for kills because sometimes minions actually will give you more kills. So you guys saw there that my passive instantly activated because I had an enhanced second skill that I added extra stacks on. And now Moskov actually landed the hit on Xborg and he used the revamped ult to get the kill. So now that allows us to push this turret and that was a really good ult just here by Moskov. And now he's retreating. For me though, I can just keep pushing because I have tankiness and even if Helker were to jump in right here, he would not be able to kill me. So now that I push those minions, I'm like, don't go for the second turret just yet because that's going to be a little bit stupid. I see Helkert's there in the minimap on the very bottom, as you guys saw there. He appeared for a sliver of a second next to Turtle. If you guys didn't catch that, you can rewind. But um, yeah, so Franco and Borg are right now on the minimap. Remember the tip with the minimap is you always want to look at it occasionally, like once every like 10, 20 seconds. To be honest with you, when I was playing this game, I was probably looking at the minimap only once every like half a minute. And that's perfectly fine too. Like this is Mythic Glory level gameplay. And you don't even need to look at the minimap all the time. Like, I didn't even think that Moscow would be coming. I saw it once it actually hit the Xborg, right? So right now, I'm ulting not to get the kill on Xborg, but to prevent him from pushing my turret. The reason why this is really important is because I don't want the Xborg to push my turret and just get free farm later on. This actually makes it so that he's forced to stall out and he can't really push anymore until later. So the enemies are probably going to get turtle here um, because I'm not there to help and our teammates are dying, which is unfortunate. So my goal right now isn't actually to like push or anything, it's actually to cycle around now because I see that the turtle is still up and the enemies are not here yet. But I saw that Xborg is mid lane, so I need to stop him from pushing this mid lane turret. So I can come in here from behind, force him to waste his flicker, and I manage to make my passive activate, and I break his armor, which is a really good benefit because now he has to spend a ton of time either killing a jungle monster or recalling to save time. And now you guys can see the enhanced second skill, I just instantaneously activate my passive, I dodge the Hellcurt with my third skill, and now uh, thankfully we should be able to get the kill on Franco because we separated him from his teammates. So that's Yuzong's main goal in a team fight. You want to make it so that the enemies are split into two forces. One force goes in one side, the other goes into the other, and makes it eventually so that basically they're being pincered, right? Because you are forcing their damage carriers to go one way, and then everyone who can't escape is left behind for your teammates to get the kill. Which is what I did there with the Franco, and as you guys can see I'm kind of chasing. Um, this is actually a big mistake by me, I should not be attacking, and I get hooked, and bloody hunted, and I just die. Which is really unfortunate because I probably could have been able to evade that, but that was a stupid play by me because I got too aggressive, and that's just the end. So while we're dead, I'm actually going to tell you a bit of a tip when love what you should do while you're dead. Um, you actually want to look around the minimap and just kind of see what your teammates are doing. Um, you guys can see that Valor here is pushing bottom. Um, our Farsa is just kind of dancing around middle with our Minotaur. And she ends up actually getting hooked, which is unfortunate. Um, and notice how in our top lane right now, our Moskov is fighting Helker. Unfortunately, he makes a panic ult and he dies. I'm actually going to ult to the mid lane. But you guys will see here that this is actually a really bad play because I'm playing way too aggressively. All my teammates are retreating, Franco uses his flicker, and I end up just dying right right after I respawn. So <laughs> you guys can see I type my bad because this is a very stupid play. I end up getting my tank killed as well. And overall, it was just a horrible play by my part. So that's actually another thing that you have to manage with Yuzong. You want to make it so that you don't want to initiate first unless you know that your teammates are nearby. So it's kind of like you can really play Yuzong like an ag aggressive tank fighter. Um, he's not really a damage carry per se because his goal is to go with your tank and cause like chaos. Um, you don't want to just go in first and die like they just did. <laughs> um, yeah, he's he's really a character that shines when you play with your team. And believe it or not, even in solo queue, like this is solo queue, guys. Like all these gameplay footage is going to be solo queue, but. You guys will see that like he really shines, and you might argue that it's because, oh, you're in Mythic Glory. That's not necessarily the case. Here I actually petrified the Villier, 
because I was like, okay, he's definitely coming in. And even though I die, notice how our team is able to get a couple kills, right? So even though this was a overall loss for us because we lost four people, it's actually not too bad because notice how we are like kind of low, right? Okay, our Granger thankfully lives. Yeah, we're 10 to 14 right now in kills. So we're actually behind. So a three to four trade isn't actually too bad for us because we are actually getting like more farm. So here I realized that Irithyll is the real threat. So I said, we got to focus Irithyll. And it was at this point that I kind of understood, okay, I'm in trouble because if I don't kill Valir, he's going to push me away or fireball me to death, so I can't do anything. But at the same time, if I go for Valir, then Irithyll is just going to come in and finish me off. So I'm in a kind of a dilemma right now. You guys will notice that I think I just sold an item. I'm not super sure. Actually, no, I didn't sell anything, but I did get the first item for um, Rose Gold Meteor. This is basically like you get the shield still. It's just a weaker version. I end up getting hit by the Xborg here, but it doesn't really matter. I'm using my ult to cause hate chaos here, as you guys can see. I end up focusing the Hellcurt, get the kill. Um, Valir here and Irithyll have come in to try and kill me, so I'm just going to try and stall for as much time as I can. Unfortunately, it doesn't work, and all our teammates should be dead here, but Moskov does end up coming in to get a finisher. I don't think he can kill Valir here. Yeah, he ends up pushing Valor away, or Valir away, and... Overall, it was still a 4 kills for 4 kills, so it was beneficial for us. And he actually is going to probably be able to get the red buff here, so this is huge. Um, he actually does not go in for the kill here, I believe. Yeah, but it was close. And overall, I feel like this is a good team fight because we're getting a little bit closer to our gold gap. So I respawn. Right now, my KDA is 3-4-7. Um, Yuzong, when you play him, you'll realize that um, if you're playing him properly, you're going to get a lot more assists than kills. Um, he's more of a team play character, like I said. He's not a solo shine kind of guy. And with the meta shifting, like he used to be so strong as a physical fighter because his passive would activate instantly. But um, ever since they made it so that his passive activates a little bit slower, you want to build him a bit more tanky. As you guys saw also, by the way, um, our Moscow thankfully got a kill. And right now I'm actually playing the duty of an XP leaner. So notice how their jungler is dead. Um, they might not take Lord here, but in the chance that they did, um, I'd be forcing them to make a choice, right? I'd be forcing them to either, what do you want to do? Do you want to try and contest the Lord or do you want to try and save your turret? And you guys can see here that I'm pre-aiming my ult outside the turret in case they do to try to fight me. Because if they do fight me, I'm not going to fight. I'm just going to run away. So our Moscow tells me to aim for Irithyll. So I'm like, okay. So I'm going to ignore Valor now, and I'm just going to go straight for Irithyll. I'm fighting in the mid lane because I can, because Yuzong's gimmick is he can travel basically half the map in one go. We steal Lord. I noticed that there's going to be a post-objective teamfight here, so I ult. And our teammate said go straight for Irithyll. But right now, all our teammates have gone away. Um, they've either died or they've retreated. And I'm like, okay, there's no point in me going in and just dying as well. So I'm just going to use my ult to just back off again. So you might argue that that's a wasted ult, but keep in mind, um, whenever you ult, you also have to kind of keep in track like the minimap and see what your teammates are doing. This is why I say that this character really shines if you know how to play roamers really well as well. Um, right now you guys can see I've already built my items and I just need to go for more defense now. So I'm already kind of tanky enough at this point, so I don't even need the Dreadnought armor anymore. I'm just going to sell it, go directly for Brute Force Breastplate here. Um, breastplate, sorry I can't talk guys. <laughs> And our Moskov gets a huge kill on um, Valor here. Unfortunately, I think he ended up, he's probably going to go down to the Hellcurt here, unfortunately. Yep. But I'm going to come in. Um, I'm right now just trying to grant vision for my team and I'm trying to figure out wherever the heck their marksman is. Um, I didn't find them, so I'm just going to jump over the wall here and just push this turret with our team. And now I'm just going to see if we can push the interior as well. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we can because there are those here. However, I should be able to dive them. Unfortunately, I missed my Petrify. I hit the Franco at least, but now my goal is to just back off. So this is actually another reason why Hunter Strike is a good item, by the way, on Yuzong. I didn't build it in this game, but if you do end up building Hunter Strike, it pairs really well with his passive because he's going to end up getting like an 80% movement speed bonus because of like how his passive works. You get 30% extra movement speed and then like the 40% from Hunter Strike. So really good. Obviously, you're not going to get the full 80%, but it is what it is. So this combo I did here was actually a bit different than what I typically do. So you guys noticed how I ulted after I initiated my 1-3-2 combo. Um, that's a bit of a hybrid technique that you can use. Basically what you do is you go in 
Use all your skills for chip damage and then you back off with your ult. Unfortunately, I played a stupid move here. I didn't realize Irithyll will be hiding in that bush and I end up dying. But if I was a smarter player and I knew how to use use on more effectively, I probably would have backed off and recalled in the bush next to like the Lord, right? Because you don't want to go in when all your skills are on cooldown. Um, Yuzong's ult is really the main initiating factor. So if you're ever fighting against the Yuzong, keep in mind like how long his ult cooldown is. It's like about 45 seconds. Um, it's like a minute in the early game and 45 seconds in the late game. Keep that in mind and just keep track of it and you'll be able to counterplay against Yuzong effectively. But in this case, I made a stupid like decision and Irithyll just killed me easily. So yeah, so right now I'm just kind of panning the minimap, seeing what kind of fights are going on. We're still losing 18 to 25, our Granger gets hooked, unfortunately he goes down because of that. Um, but I noticed here that we actually have a good chance to make a comeback with our opposed objective team fight. I go for Irithyll, I end my ult prematurely, use my Petrify, and kill the Irithyll, getting a shutdown kill. Um, and now, we should be able to win this fight because both of their tanky fighters are down, and Franco is heavily out of position. <laughs> I get an alarm saying that I am late to class, I forgot to turn that off guys, my bad. <laughs> but um, yeah, so now at this point I'm like, okay, there's a high chance that they're going for the Lord right now. Um, Moskov thankfully has the same idea that I do, and he ults to get vision. I end up buying my last item, I think. So now I am officially full build. So 16 minutes and 30 seconds into the fight, Yuzong is now full build with this specific fight. Um, right now I'm like, okay, this is probably a decent fight to take. We can probably take Lord and win. Um, but you guys will see that I'm ulting here. You might think, why am I ulting when there's no one nearby? That's precisely why I am ulting. This is zoning. Yuzong's really good at zoning because you can just fly over the area like I did in red buff to get vision of where the enemies might be. Um, they stole Ricky, unfortunately, which is not ideal, but it's still okay. Um, I provided vision there, so even though I didn't actually see anyone, if there was someone there, I could have just gone in with my skills and prevented them from going towards the Lord. So that's why Yuzong is a really strong fighter. Um, he can zone people really well. I have a hunch that the enemies might be nearby, so I end up going in. I miss my skills unfortunately, but our teammates end up finishing off the kill, and I kind of panic petrify there and end up living because of it. So I see that our teammates are still fighting, so I cancel my recall. I'm gonna go into ult, um, but I'm like, okay, never mind. They're backing off. I might as well just kill this minion or something, or like go and heal. So I just kill this minion. Notice how the emblem, by the way, combined with bloodlust stacks, makes it so that I regen a ton. So our teammates end up getting the kill on Irithyll, which is a huge kill by the way, because that allows us to end the game. So I just push my team here. All of us are alive. I use my third skill to airborne the Franco. Xborg unfortunately tries to push us. Uh, he doesn't end up winning and we just end the game right there. And that is game one. So as you guys can see, Yuzong is mostly a guy who holds down his lane and then uses his ult to approach the other lanes. Um, we didn't really fight too much in Xborg's fight in this case, so I'm just going to show you guys um, the next game, which is going to be a lot more aggressive, um, and you guys will see what I mean. So notice how I use my ult to steal our lord here. Um, <laughs> weak HC. Oh, weak Hellcurt. Yeah, their Hellcurt kind of made a misplay. Um, our team comp was really strong against Hellcurt, and he tried to... <laughs> yeah, you guys can see we're having a bit of a trash talk. <laughs> Law of the toxicity, oh god. But yeah, so overall I feel like Hellcurt was probably a bad pick because he probably, actually no, it was a good pick but he went for me, which is a bad play. Um, he probably should have teamed up with Franco to get some early game kills. As you guys can see here, our stats are pretty nice and yeah, I did a lot of tier push, our Granger did the most, that's why he's MVP and overall I feel like we just had a really solid team. So that was game number one. So moving on to game number two. All right, so for game two, as you guys can see, um, overall our team comp is like, it's kind of even. So they have a meta jungler and a meta uh, marksman. So they have Bruno, they have Harley, uh, we have Aulis and we have Clint. So this game can be going either way. They have Gord though, which is good for us because Gord is actually not a very mobile hero, which means I can dominate really well. Our Veil can dominate really well. And even though we have a weaker team comp overall, notice our Clint is global nine Clint. So I have high expectations. I have high expectations of how Clint will do. So this is our pregame matchup. Um, thankfully, there's not too much of a delay, so I don't even need to skip forward to anything. 
and <laughs> I'm kind of on some crack in the in this game at the start. I'm like, I'm not even paying attention. I just kind of like <laughs> move upwards. But XP lane is in the bottom, so definitely go bottomwards. Um, also, I'm fighting against um, Ruby this game. So again, she's a skill based hero. So I'm getting Jarnot armor. Um, I'm actually going to help out our jungler a bit. So I know that a lot of low rank players don't really do this. But if you're playing in ranked games, I highly recommend if you're next to the buff, whether you're marksman or whether you're fighter, um, help out your jungler, take out the jungle a little bit quicker because it'll really help later on because junglers really need rotation. So as you guys can see here, I'm using my first skill to get a little bit more of an engage um, and last hitting the minions. Remember last hitting gives you like 20% more gold and XP. So make sure you guys last hit things whenever you can. Notice how here I managed to last hit it, so I get 81. If I hadn't last hit that, I probably would have only gotten like 60 something. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm just last hitting. Right now what I'm doing is I'm trying to zone. So I'm trying to prevent Ruby from getting closer to my minions so that she gets less farm than I do. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work out because Ruby has more range than I do. And instead of trying to go for the minions here, yeah, see, instead of getting 81, I got 65. This is why last hitting is really important because um, that's actually a lot of gold. Here I'm actually realizing that Ruby's not going to go out of the turret, so I'm trying to cut the lane as fast as I can. Um, this is really good of a strategy because it lets me rotate to faster, like faster to other lanes. Um, unfortunately, our team is losing in our other lanes. As you guys can see here, the score is 1 to 3. All is good to kill, so it's now 2 to 3. So we're not too far behind now. Um, Ruby is going to do her absolute best to not go and kill me. Um, I'm going to go for magic shoes. Um, remember guys, for both of these games, I'm using the bottom build for damage. Um, Ruby actually manages to steal the crap from me, but I managed to get a little bit like of damage on her, on her which is good for me. Um, I'm just laughing because I made a misplay and I'm just trying to taunt her. And notice how my um, enhanced second skill allows me to get the kill here because my passive was activated instantly. So never underestimate Yuzong's passive. Um, if you're like at half health and he hits you with his combo, he can pretty much kill you regardless of whether you're a, like a squishy hero or if you're a tanky hero. Um, here I'm actually going to use my ult to initiate the turtle. And my goal is purely to go for Harley because he is their jungler. I still have Petrify up. I not Petrify, but um, our Carmela gets a stun. And I managed to actually kill Harley and we get the turtle easily because of that. So Yuzong's gimmick is, remember, is zoning the enemies out when they're trying to go for objectives. I'm playing this out of range right now because I know how Ruby works. Her ult can easily pull me into the turret, especially if she uses Flicker with it. So I'm just keeping my distance because I do not want to get stunlocked in the turret where I can easily get killed. So I'm just trying to fight as far away from her as possible. And again, see how it is good because I know Ruby's going to build extra defense later on. And of course, I get to use anti-heal in addition to extra damage. So here I'm actually activating my passive. She does exactly what I feared she would do, but thankfully she doesn't have her second skill, so she can't lock me into the turret. And it ends up just being like a waste of an ult for her, which is really good for me. And I'm about to get my Petrify up soon. Um, unfortunately, our other lanes are getting ganked quite hard. Um, as you guys can see, their team is kind of focusing on trying to eliminate our Clint as fast as possible, probably because they realize that he's, you know, the global nine Clint. Um, we thankfully get a kill against the meta marksman Bruno, who is getting a nerf by the way soon, so thank god guys, the Bruno meta can finally end soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm just kind of like dancing around, killing the minions. I get 87 for that kill when I last hit it, so keep in mind, you get like 60 something gold if you don't last hit it, you get 80 something gold if you do last hit it. Just overall, just try to last hit it whenever you can. I'm actually killing this um, little... What do you guys even call this guy? I don't know what to call this guy, but I call it the spider, I guess. I was killing the spider to get some extra health, but it didn't really work out like I thought it would. I'm just using my ult here to get some chip damage on and use my passive to see if I can heal up a bit. Um, and I managed to get back in time to get the catapult. Unfortunately, I don't last hit it, but I still get 70 gold and some XP, which is really good. Um, unfortunately, um, I don't think I can actually do too much here, but my passive did activate instantly which is a huge plus for me because I ended up hitting multiple targets, right? And now I'm going to use my combo, and she should be dead because my passive activated on her. So maximizing the number of times you activate your passive on Yuzong is when you really understand how to use him and when you really start shining into his like real potential. So as you guys saw there, I was doing pretty good. 
just kind of easily killed her. We're starting to dominate now. Um, we're 11-7 now. And we got another turtle. So we are now very far ahead. I know that Ruby doesn't have fast mobility, so she can't come and stop me from pushing this turret. I'm going to go for more damage because I'm winning the lane. If I was losing, I probably would have bought more defense. But I can push this turret easily. She tries to ult me, but she was a little bit too slow in that regard. I just kind of bully her here. And notice how I'm attacking her while my passive is activated. And because of that, my passive activated several times, more than just once, right? So instead of having just five activations, that probably did like seven or eight activations, which is why I managed to chip her down to such low HP. And she also can't really heal up much because I have Sea Hubbard now, which is anti-heal. So anti-heal items are really important. I'm actually going aggressive here against Harley because I know that Harley is underfarmed due to how our Aulus has been playing. And combined with our teammate, uh, Vale, who was really map aware here and actually came to gank with me after I did that initiate, we ended up killing their Harley. Even though, I don't know if we ended up getting the blue buff, I couldn't see there. But because of that, we ended up killing up Harley, which is a huge advantage because jungler's lives are like the most important in the early game. And their Bruno is also dying really often, which is good for us because that means our Clint is getting really, really fed. Because I don't think our Clint's been dying. So overall, this is getting a more and more one-sided as we continue this game. And I'm just kind of bush camping here because I don't want to go into them when I don't have my third skill up yet. And my teammate was approaching anyways. So at this point, I'm moving up into the top lane because I see that our teammates are all just concentrated up there. And I think I'm going to try and go approach them from the side. I'm just using my first skill here to reveal the bush. There's no one there. So I fight this ruby. Um, but I don't decide to fully commit because I realize I could just go for our Bruno. Unfortunately, our Carmilla is the one who gets the flicker ult treatment from ruby. Um, I actually use my ult here, if you guys didn't see, to shove the ruby like back into the veil ult. <laughs> which is a really toxic... Like thing you can do, I guess. But um, yeah, because Yuzong's ult does a little bit of knockback whenever you hit someone. And because of that, Ruby couldn't dodge the Veil ult, which is why she died there. So Gord is just trying to defend the mid lane turret. Unfortunately, he just doesn't have enough farm yet to prevent us from pushing it. So at this point, I'm just kind of like moving around, trying to dodge the Gord as much as I can. He misses his ball, so thankfully I still live. He also misses his flame shot, but I realized he is literally chasing me down to try and kill me. So I use my skills on the turtle to get a little bit more lifesteal. And yeah, I actually don't decide to recall here because I realize I can get a little bit more healing and farm just from attacking this spider here. And I'm actually gonna stick around a bit because I don't know if our team is actually gonna fully commit to the turtle or not. So I'm just gonna hide in this bush because I'm low and I'm gonna go in when I find the opportunity. So my ult is about to be up. So this is my perfect chance to zone their Harley away. Um, unfortunately, I don't manage to do it, but we do manage to stall them a little bit and force them out to use their skills. So Harley was forced to use his second skill early because of that. I think I should be going down here, but never mind. Um, the brute force breathless actually helped me, and I managed to get Athena shield in time, which is why I didn't die. I realized here that Bruno was pushing top lane. Thankfully, our veil is hyper map aware, and he stops Bruno before he can push it. Unfortunately though, our Veil underestimated Bruno and dies in the process, but thankfully Aulus gets a trade and kills the Bruno in retaliation. So um, Veil, you guys will see later that our teammates are going to start trash talking the Veil for not being like really good in terms of KDA, but his map awareness makes him one of the best teammates that I have right now, despite him dying so often, because it's not his fault that he's dying. He's just squishy, the enemy team is focusing him because he's easy to kill. Kind of like how we're focusing Gord and Bruno, right? But um, you should never look at just KDA. You should always look at how the players are doing things. Like, how are they using their skills? How are they looking at the map and utilizing like team fights? And who are they focusing? Are they smart or are they inexperienced, right? So Vale is a very experienced teammate. Notice how he even lived here with just a sliver of health. And yeah, Ruby ended up pushing my turret, but she can't actually stop me from pushing this turret as well in retaliation. So I'm just going to stay here and push it because she ended up going to mid lane. Um, this Ruby is actually kind of inexperienced because she should expect me to push this turret. Unfortunately, she does not. Again, I'm aiming my ult in case they rush me. They do not, so I don't need to use my ult. If, I, if they do rush you, by the way, in these kind of scenarios, all you need to do is ult and run the frick away. Like, they can't stop you because you're immune to CC. So it's just super easy. So here, I'm actually going in because I realized that 
um, I can use my Petrify here with my Valor. Unfortunately, uh, not my Valor, my Veil. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get the kill because um, this Gord here was playing pretty smart. Our Veil is literally living by a single strand of life. <laughs> so I don't know why he's not recalling, but I'm just kind of staying here to save him in case the enemies do decide to charge him. I'm trying to distract them. Um, thankfully, he recalls safely and he does not die. Just kind of paying him back for being such a good teammate, right? And I'm dominating right now, I'm 5-0-2. Um, they haven't been able to kill me just yet, but we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty sure I do die later on, by the way, because believe me, Gord and Bruno hit really hard. So I'm trying to run here. Unfortunately, Ruby sees me and she kills me. All this announces that the Franco has no flicker. That's actually a really good call out, guys, that you need to learn to do. If you see the enemies using their battle spells or like an ultimate that takes a long time to cool down, like say it in your team chat. Don't announce it in the all chat like our Alice did, but um, say what's happening. Our Carmilla wasn't really going in for our Veil and our Clint here, which is why I say, Carmilla bro, please help the damage carries, which are, by the way, Veil and Clint. And I'm telling her to stay in the front and beat the Franco ultimate because if the Franco ends up ulting either of our damage carries, they're definitely going to die. So I say, got you because um, our Veil is saying that she's going to carry, <laughs> which means I am, I'm assuming that they're t like duoing together, which is really nice. Franco ends up wasting his whole like hook here on the blue buff. I'm trying to go in for Bruno here because I know that Bruno is their damage carry. I missed my Petrify, unfortunately, and I just die. But I did notice that Franco ulted, so that actually wasn't a completely useless death because now Franco can't use his ult. And if you guys don't know, Franco's ult, <laughs> um, I obviously know because I am like, you know, a top US Franco. It takes about 50 seconds to cool down. So this Ruby is playing really stupidly. Um, she overextended. Unfortunately, our Carmilla also overextends a bit and she dies. However, she did end up using up their Harley ult. So I'm like, okay, who is their most like powerful enemy right now? And I'm like, I might as well finish getting anti Karas because I feel like they're doing a ton of physical damage to me. And Bruno's balls, like believe it or not, every single one of those enhanced the balls that he shoots counts as skill damage and you can actually reduce his damage using anti Karas. So I'm gonna go for that and I'll probably go for, um, what is it? The, I forgot the name of it, but like the iron armor that you get at, like it's like the first defense item that shows. Basically, she just kind of like reduced the physical damage of Bruno even further. Right now, I'm going for Franco. Notice how, by the way, even though it was for only a split second, Franco ulted me. So Franco ulted me and it expired. I'm actually doing a misplay right now because I should be making a call out to my team saying, yo guys, Franco has ulted me. So he doesn't have an ult for the next like 50 seconds. Like making your teammates know like the enemy's like stuff is really important. Like if you look at any pro team play, they're always telling to each other, like on a like, because they're all playing next to each other, right? They're like, "Yo, guys, um, my teammate says that um, they saw that the enemy ulted, or they wasted their spell, or like for instance, they use these like ults and spells on me, like Saber ulted me, for instance, or Harley ulted me, Franco ulted me, Tigreal ulted, stuff like that, just to let your teammates know like whose spells are still up and what dangers they have to be aware of." Right now, I realize there's probably not much value in taking a fight. So I'm just kind of getting a little bit more farm, taking the minions in top lane, hoping that they will go to the middle turret and push it down. I'm now rushing to the mid lane, approaching from the back. I'm not actually initiating a fight. I'm going for the Ruby because she's the one who's the most out of position. And unfortunately I get hooked, so I die. If I didn't get hooked there, I probably would have lived. But um, unfortunately I end up dying. Our Veil survives, but gets hit by the Harley ult and dies in the process. So that's really unfortunate. And it's looking more and more dire as we go. <laughs> so now Veil is like, okay, our Carmilla is not playing so well. <laughs> well, actually, no, not Franco, but their Franco is being really annoying. Always solo, no help damage. Yeah, never mind. He is trash talking the Carmilla. <laughs> so initially, he was like, don't worry, guys, Carmilla's gonna carry. And then he realized, no, Carmilla's not playing so well. And I'm like, okay, no, Carmilla, you have to stay in the front. You got to go in front and tank all the damage and the skills like I've been doing. Because, okay, Carmilla's now saying, okay, I have lag. Understandable, I don't know if it's truthful, but remember, you don't want to be toxic towards your teammates because you never know when they can pull up. Like just now, Carmilla pulled up hard. <laughs> she made a very good play by making it so that, um, by the way, if you guys don't know, Carmilla's ult will make you linked. 
and you guys will take shared damage and shared crowd control. So let's say like for instance in that case, Franco had been connected to Bruno because of Carmilla's ult, right? That basically means if we do a thousand damage to Franco, Bruno will also take a thousand damage. So even though Franco is taking no damage at all because he's so tanky, Bruno is taking the full force of the thousand damage. And if we attack Bruno, it also goes back to Franco. Same case for crowd control. If we crowd control Bruno, he crowd controls Franco. If he crowd controls Franco, it also crowd controls Bruno. So in this case, Vale is trying to defend against the Lord Zolo. I'm just trying to push this turret because our Clint and our Vale both recalled. I realized now is probably not a good time to keep pushing. So I try to ult away, but unfortunately Bruno just literally two shots me. So this is why I say that Bruno is like one of the best marksmen right now. You, as you guys just saw, I have like a thousand, two thousand health left and I just die. So Vale obviously is kind of tilted because they did that. Um, and I'm probably going to say uh, my bad or yeah, I'm just going to say it was pushable. Trying to push the mid lane turret. He's getting really tilted right now because he's been dying quite frequently. <laughs> but um, yeah, just keep in mind, never be toxic to your teammates because you never know when they might pull up and make an insane clutch. Um, right now though, Vale is just kind of chipping. He's playing really well. He's positioning really smartly as well. I'd say that he's probably the best teammate we have right now. Um, even more so than the global Clint actually, because he's being really map aware and his skills have been on point and in tandem with what we've been doing as a team overall. Unfortunately, the only downside is he's been getting targeted quite hard, which is probably why he's tilting pretty hard right now. Um, but yeah, like in this case, like he should be backing off after he realizes that Harley and Franco are both there. Harley had casted his second skill, which is why he probably recalled there. And this was actually a huge play. We ended up focusing their Bruno. And now that Franco's here, he can't run because our team isn't all just there. This is also why I think that Immortality is sometimes very stupid because a lot of the time when Immortality activates, you're just in a situation where you're gonna die anyways. In this case, I'm like, holy crap, we're so screwed. Gord is about to end the game. Um, but thankfully our team recalled in time and I'm like, oh no, we're about to lose. <laughs> and Vale says report tank right before that game ends. But thankfully the game does not end and we literally live with one HP on our base. So you might be wondering why I wasn't recalling by the way there. It's because I thought that we'd be losing anyways, but in the off chance that we did win, I'd be able to come from the flank and just make it so that the enemies have no escape route. This is why when you're playing as a team, you don't want everyone recalling at the same time. You want to have half of the team going in to the base to defend from the back after recalling and half of the team going in from the front to pincer the enemies essentially. Which is what I did there, which is why Gord was forced to Winter Trenchin, and he still died because obviously he doesn't have any escape skills. If he was playing a mage like, I don't know, Kagura, he'd probably live. So if you guys don't know, what I'm saying here is Lord's gonna spawn at the 15 second mark after minute 18. So Lord always spawns after you kill it at either the 15 second mark or the 45 second mark. So let's say that it, Lord was killed at like 18, like right now, 18 minutes, 20 seconds. Then the Lord would summon at 18.45 on the timer. If you guys, but we obviously killed it before then, so it spawned at 18.15. Keep those in, like keep those like timers in mind. It's always either at 15 seconds or 45 seconds. Um, and you can push accordingly because of that. Thankfully we get the kill on Bruno. Unfortunately our Veil might not live this, but the Harley decides to not fully commit because he has no idea where we are. That's just map and awareness, by the way, because we were both in top lane, we were both visible, he should have come in. My passive activates on Ruby and she dies because she couldn't get that first skill hit off of me. Franco misses his skill. I thankfully can live here because I have my passive and I don't want Vale to die. So I actually face tank the Harley attack for him. I probably didn't have to, but I didn't want to risk it because Vale's life is more important overall. And you guys will see me say that here, you over me Vale, because Vale has more defensive capabilities and he has more potential to one shot the enemies. Because remember, my goal is to just initiate team fights or cause chaos, while as like Vale is one of our two damage carries and he has the potential to one shot. Unfortunately, my sacrifice was kind of in vain <laughs> because um, he ends up just pushing. <laughs> Man, you really hate fr that Franco. Um, I, I noticed that he ulted just the Franco, not even the Bruno, which was out of character for our Veil, because normally he'd be just like go in and kill the Bruno. Obviously he's tilted, <laughs> which is why he just sacrificed his life in exchange for Franco, which is really funny from what I saw. 
Um, unfortunately, our Clint just dies instantly because Bruno is just that strong. But um, yeah, so we're just kind of pushing here. Um, honestly, like right now, what we should do is we should just play a bit safer until Lord comes back up again. But um, as of right now, there's not really much to do. Clint is now saying that he's going to build winter, uh, Wind of Nature, which is really weird because he should have been building that earlier. Uh, Ruby actually ended up stealing that uh, Ricky as well, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Ricky, by the way, gives you like a slight damage defense. Okay, so here I'm like, I was going to attack the Bruno and then I decided not to because I realized Bruno has Inspire and he can easily kill me. So I instead go for the bush and go for a surprise play like this with my Veil. So obviously we're not doing together, but I trusted that my Veil had smart comboing abilities and I just went in afterwards. Our team is now pincering. Gord has made a mistake here with Winter Shunshin and he ends up dying. So now we've killed two of their crucial characters. Franco is low. We killed Harley, which is huge. And now the only like damage carry is their Bruno, which I can easily go in for like this because Veil managed to knock him airborne. And if he, even if the airborne ended, my airborne was there to finish him off. And we just come in here, finish off the Lord, and we should be able to end this here. So obviously that was a very fun game. I had a really good Veil teammate. And honestly, Overall, props to him. He should really be MVP this game. Like, if you guys take a look at everything that he's played, he's MVP for sure. But if you guys just looked at it from an objective standpoint, you might just call him a toxic teammate. But he's been playing really well, and he deserves everything that he's done. So props to him. He played very well. And he deserves to be Mythic Glory. Like, I think he deserves to be higher from his game sense. But for sure, like, he did really well. 53 stars Mythic Glory. We ranked up. And yeah. So I want to, well, in this case, I was on a five win streak, 8.5 gold. And you guys will see here that Veil is 7.8 silver. He played so well, but he only got silver medal. So, so I'm like, nah, Veil OP because they said um, Veil is trash and his build is bad. Honestly, he's played so well. Um, he had insane synergy with us. Like he was so good. I don't know why they're trash talking him. Like props to him guys, he played so well. Carmilla pulled up too with her support. And notice how I pushed a ton, I took a lot of damage. I dealt a little bit of damage, but again, Yuzong's not a damage carry, he's more of a scattering kind of guy. You wanna go into team fights and force the enemies to run. So that's Yuzong guys. Um, those are the two games. And I guess we can just go into the closing session now. So there you have it, that was the Yuzong guide. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it and hopefully I gave you a little bit more insight of how to play him. Um, I'll probably be playing him once I get him on my like alternate account on Zero to Hero. Um, he'll probably be next after Glue, so keep that in mind. I'll probably buy him with fragments or something if he's in the shop. Um, also, by the way, if you guys don't know, if you tap on that crystal while he's using this, he actually transforms into the Cosmic Dragon, <laughs> which is really nice. So I'll close off here. If you guys did enjoy, um, I actually never say this in my videos, but if you guys do enjoy, please like the video and subscribe. Uh, I'd really, really appreciate it. <laughs> and it really does help. Um, I'm sorry for the really long video, by the way. Um, maybe you guys enjoy longer videos. I know some of you guys do. Um, hopefully it did help. And if you guys ever need a reference, come back to this guide. And if you ever feel like it feels outdated, just shoot me a comment saying, hey, uh, Sensei, can you give me a new updated video on how to play Yuzong? And I will happily do it for you. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Um, episode 35, I think, of Zero to Hero will be out sometime soon. So keep a heads up for that and I'll see you guys then. So until then, bye bye and have a good one.